All right, take a good look at the bottom end of this uh, shockwave antenna. Uh, it looks to be that SO239 is charbroiled. I can uh, show you the LMR600 and the PL259, how it's charbroiled as well. But let's talk about this for a minute. Uh, this antenna is uh, sitting on top of a 80 foot mast, uh, 97 foot of LMR600. Uh, I was running a 12 pill to this antenna, um, and of course I know my SWRs are flat and my ohms are at 50. I have a MFJ259B and uh, also a MFJ209 and a uh, SWR meter just to, to verify those readings. But nevertheless, uh, I talked quite well with the 12 pill attached to uh, this antenna and uh, um, well one day I decided to uh, get my beautiful lady Firefox to put together a 32 pill linear and so after putting together this uh, 32 pill Toshiba driven linear uh, we want to try it out and which we did and we tried it out well this right here is the results we put 3,000 RMS watts, give or take, uh, through that coax, right on into that antenna. Which is to advertise this antenna will take 10,000 watts. It doesn't say if it's PEEP watts or RMS watts. But nevertheless, so, uh, this antenna will be coming down. I hear pretty soon, too, uh, we have the game starting. So uh, we'll be watching the game, but after Super Bowl Sunday, uh, this 80-foot mass will be laid down, and uh, this, this shockwave is discontinued over here at uh, Rattlesnake Radio's operations. Uh, I'll be putting a, a three or four element beam up with a 25,000 watt uh, gamma match. Um, now, nevertheless, uh, 32 pill was never meant for the uh, the shop as a base space station amp. Um, right over here, I have a a 91 Suburban that is uh, the last year the large body Suburbans just rebuilt a uh, 350 engine bored out 30 over uh, rebuilt transmission. Uh, the interior of this 91 is immaculate, really really nice. I can, I can pan over to the front end of it, anyway. Let y'all guys see just how high the antenna is. Yeah, it should be coming down. Now right around the corner, you can just see the, the headlights right there. The hood's uh, popped. Nevertheless, so that is uh, 91 Suburban. Uh, that's that's where all my attention's been going to. Everybody that's wondering where Rattlesnake Radio 187 has been, well, been on the side of my house behind my shop working on this uh, 91 Suburban, getting it ready to put a 32 pill in. Um, oh yeah, you know, I have a two 320 amp. Uh, nice alternators and I, I don't think I want to actually give too much information about what's going to be inside other than the two 320 amp lease alternators and the, the 32 pill uh, linear but nevertheless so this is what we're here for today bring that antenna down over here on the left is that Mako V5000 behind that tree? Seems to be that uh, I'm the only person that's ever made a Mako V5000 talk. I mean, the antenna was talking. It sounded like a, a gap spark transmitter. So I spent, uh, I sent the uh, Mako V5000 back to Mako, and the good people at Mako were kind enough to uh, replace the base with a, uh, a more durable base uh, and I only done that with a straight six uh, though it was a very hot straight six we we're at 18 volts uh, probably doing about 
18, 19,000 watts. I got a video of it somewhere. But, uh, yeah, it was only a straight six that had actually made the, the Mako V5000 start doing that. And, uh, well, when they sent this uh, Mako V5000 back to me, uh, I've never had no trouble since. It's, uh, it was, it, it's been put up three or four years ago. And, uh, I've, I've had flat SWRs, 50 ohms ever since. No troubles. Uh, both these two masts have uh, ground rods or uh, grounded very well. No, no trouble with grounds or SWRs or ohms, anything like that. Now that uh, Mako V5000 only has uh, R113 uh, running to it. Uh, that's only because I just uh, I run a real small operation inside, if uh, if need be. But. Oh, I had real high hopes for this uh, shockwave was going to last a lot longer than what it did. But, uh, well, you live, you learn. Tell you what, we all have a good day, and um, I'll give you all uh, another post pretty soon.